Hey everybody, it's Valen from Mischief of Mice. Welcome back to another episode of Mass Effect voice actor playthrough. Well, today we're going to be uh, running around on the Normandy, uh, one of the uh, coolest spaceships that uh, I've known in um, video game lore. It's uh, quite fantastic, but uh, I mean, we've already done a little... Glad to see you're okay, Commander. Oh, why thank you, Kate. A little tour already, but uh, we've got a little bit more free roam this time instead of just uh, going to one screen and uh, ending up uh, meeting Nihilus. So hey, let's see what uh, Caden has to say. Commander, I'm glad to see you're okay. Losing Jenkins was hard on the crew, and I'm glad we didn't lose you too. Hmm. Things were pretty rough down there. Yeah, you never get used to seeing dead civilians. It doesn't seem right somehow. But at least you stopped Saren from wiping out the whole colony. I couldn't have done it without you. We're Marines. We stick together. And I'm just sorry that we lost Jenkins. Hmm. He will be missed. Yeah, I wish I could have done something to save him. I was there. You did everything right. It was just bad luck. It's been a hell of a shakedown, Cruz. Our first mission ends with one Spectre killing another. The Citadel Council's not going to be happy about that. Probably use it to lever more concessions out of the Alliance. Hmm. You've got a good grasp of the situation. You a career man? Yeah, a lot of biotics are. We're not restricted, but we sure don't go undocumented. May as well get a paycheck for it. <laughs> Besides, my father served. I made him proud when I enlisted. Eventually. But is that why you're here? Because of your family? Um... Something similar, but, uh... No, I think I'm gonna say I'm in it for the action. Couldn't keep me out if you tried. Best way to explore the galaxy is behind a cannon. <laughs> Zadar you got here. I heard about the Skillian Blitz. I bet you had your pick of posts after that. Word is we're heading for the Citadel, ma'am. Can you, uh, tell me why? Yeah. The Captain hopes the Ambassador can get an audience with the Council. Tell them what Saren's been up to. Makes sense. They'd probably like to know he's not working for them anymore. Whatever happens, we'll be ready, Commander. Hmm. Simple enough. All right. Let's go see who else is around. Ah, uh, Dr. Chakwas. Ah, uh, one of my favorite characters to follow through the series. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me. Too safe. Too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. <laughs> but humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I stayed on to do my part. Ever think you made the wrong choice? Sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on Earth. Or maybe taking a position at one of the new med centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. Fair enough. I do really enjoy her, uh, uh, conversations. What do you know about Captain Anderson? I've served with him for a few tours now. He knows when to let things slide and when to crack the whip. The crew knows he's seen pretty much anything they'll ever run into. And he cares about the people under his command. Hmm. I think we may end up running to a few things he may not have along our journey, though. How well do you know the lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record. Over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. Hmm. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. He just gets migraines. Wow. All right. Well, I think that uh, finishes that. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. And, of course, there's always uh, little things that you can find throughout the ship. This one in my own locker has a bunch of weapons and such so I'll just grab those real quick and then we'll go talk to Ashley and see what she's up to I'm glad you're okay commander 
The crew could use some good news after what happened to Jenkins. Hmm. He'll be missed, because uh, I think she's replacing him essentially, and uh, well, Jenkins was just a go-getter, and she, as you'll find out, has her own flaws. Jenkins was a valuable part of this crew. Part of me feels guilty over what happened. If Jenkins was still alive, I might not be here. Hmm. When your number comes up, it's over. His did. <laughs> True enough. I don't think it's as simple as that, sir. Things were pretty rough down there. Are you okay? I've seen friends die before. It comes with being a Marine. But to see my whole unit wiped out, and you never get used to seeing dead civilians. But things would have been a lot worse if you hadn't shown up. Hmm. Well, I'd say she helped. We couldn't have done it without you, Williams. Thanks, Commander. That's a bit much. I have to admit, I was a little worried about being assigned to the Normandy. It's nice when someone makes you feel welcome. <laughs> Everyone on this ship has to do his or her part, Williams. Remember that. Understood, ma'am. Yeah. I really didn't care for her, uh... Let me help you, and I can avenge my crew instead, or my uh, unit uh, attitude. It was uh, a bit more um, devil may care attitude than I uh, really wanted. But that's okay. We'll deal with that. And here we have a choice of going down or up. Well, I'm gonna head up because the elevator does tend to have uh, lengthy loading screens at times. Now there is a very small one here at the door, but salute. Oops. Let's see if there's anything else to see around here. Aha! Here's one of those things you just check it out. Shows up in your codex, and you get some experience for it. Speaking of, let's go into our codex. You can actually end up uh, checking out all, so all sorts of information in here. There's tons and tons of backstory if you ever really want to get into this. Um, but. Heck, wow, it's crazy. I don't think that uh, this one ends up reading all of these, but we'll mark all those as viewed. And I think there Roughly is. Roughly 1,200 years ago, the Turians were invited to join the Citadel Council to fulfill the role of Galactic. 50,000 years ago, the Protheans were the only spacefaring species in the galaxy. As you can see, there's a uh, narrator for the Codex, uh, which is wonderful, and it's for all these entries in there. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, but hey, if you really want, you can listen to all of them instead of uh, clicking through and reading them, which I find quite nice, actually. Um, but let's see what uh, Navigator Presley has to say. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Losing Jenkins was hard enough on the crew. Mm, yeah, it was sad to lose that little crazy guy. All right. Heading up to the front. One thing I notice is that there's rarely ever anybody else up here besides Joker. I mean, there was at the beginning you saw Caden, but... Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work. <laughs> I do enjoy the voice actor for... Uh... <laughs> For uh, Joker, Seth Green, I uh, <laughs> have seen him in many a Buffy episode or on uh, other shows as well. I only ended up listing things that were um, primarily voice acting in this. Uh, nothing where people are actual uh, actors or actresses that I can find. Look at the size of that ship. The Ascension flagship of the Citadel fleet. Well, size isn't everything. <laughs> Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower, too. Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side, then. <laughs> Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. Clearance granted. You may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance operator. Roger, Alliance Tower. Normandy out. Normandy, this is Alliance Tower. Please proceed to dock 422. Don't worry, every time that we uh, dock does not mean that we end up uh, 
going through that entire sequence. It's just kind of a one of that's really cool. With the discovery music and so on. This is an outrage! The Council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Saren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action! You don't get to make demands of the Council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Saren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. <laughs> nice. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. Hmm. Saren's a threat to every human colony out there. If they don't stop him, I will. Wow. Settle down, Commander. <laughs> You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. That's Saren's fault, not hers. Then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. Hmm. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. And that's why I hate politicians. <laughs> he is quite the grumpy guy. Um but I think he's got good reason to. Not that it was our uh, actual fault that there was an invasion at Eden Prime and that uh, Saren ended up uh, turning into a backstabber, but hey, uh, bad news is bad news. So you can actually talk to your uh, companions here. This place is a little too perfect, like they're hiding something. <laughs> and they can sometimes end up saying, Big place. Boring things. Now that was really... Really? What the heck? Big place? Really, Caden? Okay. Well, decryption. Excellent. Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during a patrol of the Argos Row Cluster. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system, but was recalled before her team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for that sector. Do we want to send in a recon team? Interesting. Of course, I just hacked the uh, computer of the ambassador, but I'm sure he won't mind. I mean, he did just kind of leave us in here to do that anyway. So now we do a little exploration. I understand what you're saying, but these allegations are very serious. I can't just... This is serious. My reputation is at stake. I spoke with the consort in confidence, and her alone. And she betrayed that confidence. <laughs> Caden. All right. What are you doing? I will look into it for you. In the meantime, do not do anything rash. <laughs> so, these are some of the aliens. Uh, well, alien to us at least. That uh, run this area. Pleased greeting. Human, it is always good to see your kind. I am Ambassador Kalen. Genuine query. Is there something I can do for you this day? So these, uh, this type of alien ends up, uh, speaking as they can't verbalize very well. They end up, uh, sniffing, I guess? Uh, that's their primary way of communication, I believe, which is their, uh, those large, uh, gills on either side. Well, these guys, um, <laughs> they end up, uh, uh, I don't know, they verbalize their emotions, I guess. For instance, genuine query. So, uh, but <laughs> sometimes they end up uh, trying to be devious, and well, they end up saying that kind of information. It's really weird. Why do you explain what you're about to say? Our people communicate less through words and more through scent and slight movements. Oh, well, there you go. Plainly. <laughs> We discovered our vocal expression was not enough to convey the feelings of our conversations to other species. 
Why do you bother, Kaelin? These Earth Clan don't really care about our ways. Remorseful response, Din. <laughs> you don't truly believe that. And if you do, I am very sorry for you. <laughs> Tell me more about your species. Which are the Elkhorn. Genuine enthusiasm. I delight in telling the history of my people. It is agreeable to share our culture with others. Oh boy. Uh, well, he said culture. Let's check out culture. I'd like to know more about the culture of the Elkhorn. Frankly, we Elkhorn prefer the safety and familiarity of our own colonies to the confines of space travel. Our society is built on small, tight-knit groups. Though we are always welcoming to outsiders, our government tends to be very stable. Our people are not very comfortable with sudden changes. Hmm. Tell me about the history and origins of the Elcor. The Elcor were just beginning to explore Council's space when the Asari first made contact with us. You'll see Asari soon. With their sir. help, we discovered the relay closest to our system, and from there the Citadel. Proudly. Within one lifetime, we established a regular route to the Citadel, and quickly became one of the more active species living on this great station. Hmm. All right. Well, last question. What do you do here? Modestly. I work to bring the problems and the requests of the Elcor groups to the attention of the Council. Ha! They only give us these positions to keep us quiet. The Council doesn't care about our races. <laughs> Chastising rebuke. Your tone is inappropriate, Dan. This human is not to blame for your malcontent or your misconceived suspicions. <laughs> we'll talk to Dan in a moment. Goodbye, Ambassador. Sincere farewell. Good day to you, human. Enjoy your time on the Citadel. So actually, before we talk to Dan, let's talk to Zeltan and see what he has to say. Hello there, human. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. You seem distressed. Is there something I can do to help? Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? <laughs> this is all going so wrong. And it is the Asari consort's fault. She's the one who started all this. Hmm. Let's find out who this consort is. Who's this Asari consort? Curious, you have not heard. You must be new to the Citadel. Everyone knows Sha'ira, the consort. Hmm. I cannot speak more about this problem. It is too sensitive. Suffice it to say, she has compromised my authority as a diplomat. Mm -hmm. Where can I find the Sasari consort? She is across the bridge from here. Her offices are easy enough to spot. Good day, human. Which we'll run into the Asari shortly. But before we do, let's talk to Din. Earth Clan, you are in the wrong place, I think. Your ambassador is next door in the large office. Chastising remark. Don't be so rude, Din. At least introduce yourself. <sighs> I am Din Korlak, Volus Ambassador. Is there something I can do for you, Earth Clan? <laughs> and the Volus species do all typically tend to look very similar to Din here. And um, I absolutely love them. They're fantastic. All right, let's... Uh, let's. <laughs> so I could do this, but uh, it'll probably end up uh, drawing the conversation slightly to uh, a close. You know, let's find out why he's so cranky. You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Din. You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the Council has granted you great favor. <sighs> Chastising rebuke, Din. Your species has always been granted many concessions. Bolus territory has expanded tenfold since coming to the Citadel. <clears throat> Details. We still have no real say in the decisions that affect Citadel space. Yeah, you'll notice there was no Volus on the council. So, let's see what he has to say about it. What is this place? You are in the embassy for the Volus and the Elcor. Your ambassador is next door. 
In his own office. <laughs> the one that we broke into. In this shared space, I aid my fellow Volus when I'm not being interrupted. Oh, he's so upset. Let's learn about the Volus. I'd like to know more about the Volus. I'm sure our history and culture would bore you, Earth Clan. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do a quick one then. Actually, I would like to know more about your history. My people came to the Citadel shortly after the Asari and Salarians had discovered it. We were instrumental in establishing a standardized galactic economy. However, despite our long association with the Citadel and our many contributions to galactic society, we still do not hold a seat on the Council. Hmm. As you can see, he's a bit bitter about that. Tell me about Volus culture. We are tribal by nature, but our ways are not violent. We barter and trade our lands and tribe members in order to increase status. Larger tribes often engulf smaller ones and eventually split again. Our society is very malleable, and our government is always shifting and changing. Since we're not physically adept, we trade our services for protection. Hmm. So he's actually wearing some kind of environmental protection suit, which is standard for just about every Volus. I don't think I've seen one out of it. What is it you do here? I look out for the best interests of the Volus people. No easy task considering how often we are overlooked by the Council. Chastising rebuke, Dan. The Council favors your species greatly. You are naive. The Earth Clan will be invited to the Council long before our species will. Hmm. Why aren't the Elcor or Volus part of the Council? All species must prove themselves before they join the Council. All but the Earth Clans, it would seem. Dismissive. Ignore the Volus Ambassador, human. He is incorrect in his assessment. Really? How long have we been waiting? How long do you think we'll continue to wait? Bah! This talk is wasted on the humans. Hmm. All right, well. Goodbye, Ambassador. Yes, yes. Good day, Earth Clan. <laughs> and here we have a little subspecies on the Citadel. He's kind of a cute little guy. <laughs> we'll end up coming back to talk to some of those guys later. Welcome to the Presidium. Allow me to be your guide. Now, I feel I should let you people know that are watching now that I intend on staying on this, uh, the... where, where we're at now, this entire area, to, um, essentially explore every nook and cranny I can, but through the wonders of editing, I'll make sure to uh, cut out any of the boring stuff, but I will be including a lot of the conversations. Um, there will be some action here and there, and uh, even more so once we end up leaving the dock. But I expect to level up just from conversations, discovering things, maybe even the occasional uh, bar brawl or something for all I know. But uh, it is a fantasy game after all, even if it is a sci-fi game. Good day, Commander. The human ambassador is up the stairs, first room on the right. You know who I am? Yes, I receive reports on all newly arrived dignitaries and notable people. What is this place? This is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel Embassies. If you have more questions, please access Avena. What's that? Oh, Avena is the virtual guide for the Citadel. Feel free to access the terminal yourself. Hmm. <laughs> What's your name? What do you do here? My name is Sephiria. I'm the administrative assistant for the Embassies. You seem to be distracted. The embassies are the hub of all Citadel politics. <laughs> when you represent trillions of citizens, it tends to get a little busy. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I should be going now. Have a pleasant day. So, she said I should talk to Avina. Welcome to the Presidium. Allow me to be your guide. Let's do just that. Greetings, and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel space station. <laughs> so are you a person or a program? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence. 
programmed to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. Mm-hmm. And there are multiple sections that we can inquire about. We are actually going to be uh, visiting each one, so we might as well ask. I want to know more about Citadel security. Citadel security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. Mm, which CSEC is just a shortened version of uh, Citadel security. Tell me about the embassies. Which we Each visited. species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. Hmm. So the Volus have been waiting almost 2400 years to get a council seat, and we're 19 years in. I could understand why he's a bit, um, skeptical and worried that they're going to be overlooked. Hmm. Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment. It often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. The Council gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with their decision? I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. <laughs> My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. How come the Volus were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the Council, the Volus were, apart from the Asari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. They established many new colonies and trading outposts and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. Why weren't they made a Council race? There we go. The Council races have extensive responsibilities. They must provide personnel and ships for the Citadel fleets. They often provide economic aid in times of disaster. It would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations. Hmm. The embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the Citadel. That's interesting, because uh, they're a merchant species, um, and primarily created a lot of that stuff, or a lot of the uh, galactic trade, so I don't know why they wouldn't be able to do that. I guess they're not really uh, meant for fighting, though, so let's ask about the specters. One of those things I'm trying to become? Do you know anything about specters? The term specter is derived from the branch of special tactics and reconnaissance. Each specter agent is handpicked by the Council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. Hmm. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Specters answer to no law or authority except the Council itself. <laughs> kind of a James Bond type role, but uh, a little less managed. What can you tell me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the Council consisted of representatives from the Asari and Salarians, the two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the Council in recognition of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Since then, the three Council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community. 
while preserving individual autonomy for each species. It can't be as simple as that. There must be problems somewhere in the system. I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. <laughs> My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. And I think that pretty much finishes it. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you for using Avena. Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. <laughs> well, she was very informative. There are many, many races. Uh, we act One of the council members is actually an Asari. Um, the Krogan we haven't even seen yet, but when we do, you'll know. They're like uh, giant humpback lizard people. Um, but we'll do a little exploration, and uh, then we'll catch up on the uh, next episode here. Uh, I know this one was a little bit lower key, but remember, there is a lot of conversations to be had in this game. And until next time, see ya. <laughs>